the last book of the Old Testament speaks powerfully to the body of Christ. It challenges us in our standing. This past week, I've been in this book and just diving into it. Stay right there with me, Tony. And it has really spoken to me in ways that I've never uh, saw before. And I want to encourage you in that. I'm going to read from Malachi, the third chapter. And I'm going to read beginning at verse number one. And I'm going to read through verse 12. And I'm going to try to make some sense of what the Father is saying to us today. Amen. Malachi, the third chapter, beginning at verse number one. Behold, I will send my messenger, and he shall prepare the way before me. And the Lord whom you seek shall su suddenly come to his temple, even the messenger of the covenant, whom you delight in. Behold, he shall come, saith the Lord of hosts. But who may abide in the day of his coming? And who shall stand when he appeareth? For he is like a refiner's fire, like fuller's soap. And he shall sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. And he shall purify the sons of Levi and purge them as gold and silver that they may offer unto the Lord an offering in righteousness. Then shall the offering of Judah and Jerusalem be pleasant unto the Lord as in the days of old and as in former years. And I will come near to you to judgment, and I will be swift, be a swift witness against the sorcerers, against adulterers, and against false swears, and against those that oppress the hireling in the high, in his wages, the widow, the fatherless, that turn aside to the stranger from the right, and fear not me, saith the Lord of hosts, for I am the Lord; I change not. Therefore, ye sons of Jacob are consumed. Even from the days of your father, ye are gone away from my ordinance and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you say, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed him? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house. And prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. If I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there should not be room enough to receive it. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. And he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. Last verse. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome some land, saith the Lord of hosts. And the people of God shouted, Amen. Amen. I, 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 I'm, I'm going to teach today from this subject, a very personal subject for me, myself, as I am opening myself up on this examination table today to say that Jesus is my refiner. Jesus is my refiner, my refiner. Put your hands together like you mean it for the word of the Lord. Come on, like you mean it, like you need him to say something to you. And you can take your seats. Thank you, Tony, so much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I promise you that this text is one that many believers over the years, we've only heard a glimpse of the messages, that, that the verses that lie in Malachi 3. But today, I want to talk about the difficulties, about how the difficulties and disappointments of our life can cause us to deaden our hearts make them cold and inwardly focus. How disappointments, and if you miss that, I don't want you to miss that. If you miss that, you're going to miss the entire message. 
how difficulties that come into our lives, disappointments that come into our lives can begin to deaden our hearts, make them cold and inwardly focused. But I also want to explore how the joy and how the grace and how the love of God can make our hearts generous. There are some powerful lessons laced throughout the book of Malachi that I am hoping that we take full advantage of today, which is why I took the moment to have us prepare our hearts to receive from the Father, because something is going to change in your heart today. I'm going to take a few more minutes because I want to make sure the devil heard me. Something is going to change in your heart today. Something is going to shift in your life. So over the past few weeks, the Lord has had us speaking on generosity. And what happens when we, as a people of God, completely trust the Lord? I stated um, on multiple occasions that the Lord and his goodness has created generosity to work out of his people the spirit of selfishness. But today I want to introduce something else, and I hope you don't miss it, how that generosity is one of the highest form of worship that we can offer unto the Lord generosity pastor what do you mean generosity is one of the highest form of worship that we can offer unto the Lord I hope you know that God is present and powerful in each aspect of worship and through our worship we are being changed into the image of God the Bible says over and over again is replete with this that when you begin to worship God he begins to change who you are are. Now here's the reality, and we all need to wrestle with this. Everybody worships something or someone. Everybody worships someone or something. Whether you are a Christian or not, and don't miss this because this is very important, and it may not be for you, but I believe it is for all of us, you will become like what you worship. You're going to become like whatever you're worshiping. So if, you're, if you worship your family, You'll become someone who excludes anything that intrudes upon the comfort and prosperity of your family. If you are worshiping uh, sex, you will become a lustful person and a person who's only interested in consuming for themselves. If you worship the uh, acclaim, affection, and admiration of other people, you will set yourself up so that you can receive that from folk around you. Or if you worship yourself, you won't want to have anybody else's voice in your head but your own. But if you are worshiping God who is love, the God who sent his son Jesus to serve those who rejected him, who came to be a servant in love and to give his life as a ransom. I know in this room there are some of us who can testify slowly but surely we become more and more and more like him. We become what we worship. We will eventually become what we worship. So this morning, the specific part of the worship service that I want to look at today is the offering. This week, uh, I, I was going over thinking about how we have, and I talked with more about it. I said, man, I've, I've preached a lot on generosity throughout the summer. Uh, I've talked a lot about it, probably ever since June began. I've been speaking on generosity. And I know I've been speaking on money and on giving. And, and I was tempted to apologize in advance for my message today, especially when we got first-time visitors here, first-time people hanging out with us. Because when we have first-time visitors here, one of the things that I like, and I stress I like, I would much rather preach something that people would love to hear. Something, something that they would be just encouraged and smiling about. And some part of me is even cringing right now because I don't want people when they first visit us to think that this is all this church is about money or taking up money from you. So I was tempted to apologize, but I'm not. But I'm not. Here's why. Um, here's the first reason why I'm not apologizing. Our spiritual lives have everything to do with our material lives. The intersection of the spiritual and the physical cannot be torn apart. Therefore, when we think about our spiritual life, we necessarily have to talk about money because the Bible has a lot to say about money. So we ought to be talking about money too. And in this room, when you believe that God has richly blessed you, how do we respond to that? 
Every one of us, and he can thank God for what he has blessed us with. Here's the second reason I don't want to apologize. This text is not about your money. This message today is not about money. It is about generosity. It is about generosity. And what's at stake in the third chapter or the book of Malachi is generosity at its core. The heart that God wants his people to have at all times. Because the reality is when difficulties and disappointments come into our life, we want to contract our hearts and we will not want to give anything to anybody. See, the Bible says that when God graces us with his love and his love begins to be working in us, it will conjure up all kinds of generosity. You'll be generous with your money. You'll be generous with your time. Your heart will be generous. You'll find that your life is generous. And how many here know that sometimes it can be hard to be generous? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Y'all going to leave me hanging. Don't worry. I'm going to come down your street in a minute. It, it can be hard to be generous. So, pastor, how do we become generous of spirit and of heart? How do we not allow the disappointments and difficulties of our life to begin to make us cold-hearted? So I want us to pay attention, close attention, to how the heart closes up. Somebody say, closes up. Especially when we're suffering, especially when difficulties and disappointments show up. However, when those things happen, and you need to hear me, they are going to happen. They are going to happen. That is when we need the Lord to empower us to respond correctly, to respond the right way. And I'm talking to all of us because everybody in this room has had to endure suffering, disappointments, and setbacks. 